Tom, what is wrong with this? That a stupid football team 12,000 miles away has such a profound influence on your mood, your happiness, your emotions and everything else. It's not right, mate. Do you know what? I was thinking about you during the game on, on Sunday because I was just imagining your little face when Marcus Rashford scored that goal, that incredible, incredible goal. And then he runs over to the Arsenal fans and gives it big time. I think it was his first goal away from home in two years. One of the best players in the league right now. Man United are back. Rio Ferdinand slapping the table. I could just see how happy you were. Uh, and they played so well as well. And like it was just like the good old days. The only difference, of course, between these days and the good old days is usually when it was an Arsenal Man United slobber knocker. Man United won it and they went on to win the league. I think, my old chum, it's going to be the other way around, isn't it? Well, you got to say, um, and look, and, and thank you for the empathy, empathy and the sympathy, because I tell you what, one of the great things about football is that you don't realise how many mates you've got till your team loses. I mean, you, look, my, oh, yeah. phone, my phone is just, it hasn't stopped pinging since that 90th minute goal. It's just sods, mate. It's sods I don't you know, even... It's so funny you should say that because I have had so much grief of people on various WhatsApp groups this season. On Saturday night, normally when I finish work, I do the late game on Saturday night in the Premier League. I check my phone when I finish work. I sometimes have 70, 80, 90 people all just basically slagging me off and saying, Moy's out, West Ham are rubbish, and aren't you sad, and doesn't that fill me with joy? This week, not a single <laughs> message from anybody. You're so right. <laughs> <laughs> Look, this is reflective of the world that we live in. This is the truth. Yep. This is what people are really like, Tom. I was starting to think it's the people you and I attract, including yes. each other. Yes, that's that's exactly it. Let's go back to Arsenal. We've been saying yeah. and using the phrase the real deal all season, you and me. And and any and every time this team faces yet another big game, that question comes up. At what stage, or is it only if and when they finally clinch this thing, that we are going to actually acknowledge that yes, they are not only a real contender, they are in the box seat. Oh, they're the favourites. Right now, as we speak, they're the favourites to win the Premier League. They have 50 points after 19 games. It's a phenomenal amount of points. And not only have they got that, they've done it by beating everyone now, in including Manchester United, who are the only team to have beaten them in the league earlier in the season. They score goals from all different areas. And even that conversation, which I understand why we all have it, that conversation of if one of the big players gets injured, is there anyone of equivalent quality to come in? And if that happens, Arsenal are screwed. We've all had that conversation loads of times. Well, Gabriel Jesus, their best player for the opening 12, 13 rounds of the season, is not playing. And he's not been playing for quite some time. His replacement, Eddie Nketiah, failed Leeds United low knee, scored two today in, in the 3-2 victory over Manchester United. So I think we put that to bed. They even bought some some squad depth in Leandro Trossard, one of the better players from the best of the rest, the uh, the other uh, 14, as it were, in the Premier League. So even that's worked out for them. Everything is going in their favour. Um, I wasn't at the game this week, but I did go to the North London derby last week, and they wiped the floor with Tottenham. You know, Martin Odegaard, spectacular. Thomas Partey and Granit Xhaka have an incredible balance. Zinchenko has come back in and looks every bit the champion from another team that's come in and raised the levels everywhere else, Martinelli and Saka, every single week they deliver. They don't have an off week. They don't have an off day. And I think you can see it as a purple patch of form for one month, two months, three months maybe. Um, look at Newcastle. Look at Miguel Almiron that right now who stopped scoring. You know, this is not a purple patch for Arsenal. It's been a purple season. You don't have a purple patch for 19, 20 games. This is a team who right now should win the Premier League. That makes it different because I don't think we were still taking them seriously when we got to the World Cup because Man City exists. Manchester City are going to drop so few points between now and the end of the season. Yeah, yeah. yeah and Arsenal yeah. are going to need to beat them mm. to win the Premier I agree. League. Totally agree. But, but, but right now they're in the box seat. Tom Rooney talks sport out of the UK. Arsenal sitting top and pretty, 50 points from 19 games. And get that, people, that means, you know, if you doubled it up, that's 100 points. I mean, that's as many as been as achieved in any Premier League season. They've lost one. They've won 16 out of 19. It's Man City, though, before we talk about the bottom. And just the revelation, the revelation 
the ascension that happened at West Ham beating Everton on the weekend. But Man City, I've been sitting here saying, Tom, that if any team's capable of winning 10 in a row, it's, just, it's these guys. 2-0 down against Tottenham. Their season was over. They won that one 4-2. They've just wiped the floor with Wolves. They are still a real threat, are they not? Yeah, I mean, look, they have had some issues this season in terms of, you know, Guardiola was going on about motivation a couple of days ago, saying something to the effect of, it's Arsenal's potential first title in 20 years. We've won four out of the last six. I don't think my players are motivated for it. Maybe similar to the, the Carabao Cup elimination to Southampton. How much did they really want to win that game? So questions of motivation uh, are there right now for Manchester City. And Guardiola is making that public, essentially calling out his players in front of you and me, saying, do you want to win this or not, pal? Um, and I think that led into the game on Sunday against Wolverhampton Wanderers, who are a poor team. And also led into Erling Haaland as well, who he's not had a goal drought. It's a ridiculous concept. But, you know, he went two games without a goal and City had dried up as a collective in recent times compared to their usual high standards because they were trying to play the ball into this striker who does score, but the others have not been pitching in. People like uh, Riyad Mahrez, bar three or four weeks ago, Jack Grealish, Phil Foden, who's still in this boat, Bernardo Silva. They have not been delivering to the incredible consistent levels they have for the best part of four or five seasons. Even Kevin De Bruyne in midweek, that wasn't a fitness issue. He got dropped in midweek, rested in midweek, however you want to slice it, in order to maybe kick him up the backside a little bit and ask Kevin De Bruyne, do you have the stomach for another fight, which it's going to be? They had to push so hard to beat Liverpool in those title challenges. Even the ones they lost, it was an incredible amount of effort to go that far. And Arsenal are going to push them all the way again. This will be another 95-point season where at least two teams are going to get that many points. Let's look at that, the, the, this end of the table down here, Tom. Where they called it El Sacco. That's just, I mean, I, I love the humour. So this is Everton playing West Ham, and the fans call it El Sacco because whoever lost their manager was basically gone burger. Well, a 2 0 win to your mob over Frank Lampard's Everton. There is uh, just a a win separating 14th to 20th. Southampton at the bottom on 15, and Leicester uh, sitting there on 14th place with 18 points. Can any of those seven teams go down? Yes, I think them seven and a few others as well. I think the interesting thing about this season is currently no one's adrift. When you get to around 20, 23, 25 games, it's often one team on about 12, 13 points who you kind of know is going to go down. Think of the likes of Norwich City. They're always going to go at this sort of point. But this year, we don't have anyone like that, which makes it very nervy for everyone else in this group. I mean, in terms of the, the El Sakiko game, I think West Ham are the most likely of that seven or eight to stay in the Premier League, mainly because they've got no business being down there. The squad strength is, is kind of ridiculous, really, when it comes to relegation scrapping teams. And the wage bill and the calibre of the players and the recent pedigree of the team... You know, they've been so underperforming in terms of goal scoring, specifically this season. That's what's cost them. The first goal in the Everton game was going to be crucial. David Moyes didn't go anywhere near as attacking as I would like to, him to have gone in a game like that. But he's also won games like this for the best part of 20 years as a manager in the Premier League. And West Ham are down there because they failed to win easy home games against Crystal Palace, Leicester and Brentford. They lost a lot of them. So winning your home games against your rivals, that's what keeps you up. They lost one last week away at Wolves. They won this one against Everton and West Ham deservedly won it. Everton, I think, are different in that they don't have the squad quality. Um, I think they've got a manager who doesn't have 20 years of pedigree winning games like that. They've got this incredible negative atmosphere because of the ongoing dislike of Farhad Mashiri and Bill Kenwright and all the people that run the club. And they're just a mess. They've been built by, I think, eight different managers in 10 years. So the squad makes no sense. The team makes no sense. The outlay has been incredible. The atmosphere is incredibly negative and, and they can't buy a win. So I fancied West Ham weirdly to win. They did win. I do think West Ham will stay up, though it's going to be a long haul for them, especially when the Conference League comes back around. And I think you're looking at potentially Southampton lost at home against Aston Villa and Bournemouth who drew at home against Nottingham Forest to be my favourites to go. The third spot could be one of several teams and I'd be looking even as high as Crystal Palace. They can't buy a win right now. They could be in some trouble. I think one or two others might start slipping down the table. So I might put the entire bottom half in relegation danger. 
And I think you're more than likely to see, I think someone with a poor squad like Nottingham Forest, as the season goes on, will start to fall down the table as opposed to a West Ham or maybe even a Leicester. I think we'll start pulling up. A couple of quick questions before we let you go. I mean, we always thank you so much for your time. Tom Rooney out of Talk Sport, the Premier League. Still the Premier League in the world, just in terms of attracting players, money and everything else. And its popularity just seems to be still going through the roof worldwide, Tom. But, you know, when, when, when West Ham, I know the West Ham fans are amongst the most loyal that there are, but in that brand new stadium, when you're facing a game like that, what was the atmosphere like? Well, it's, it's funny that there's more nerves, palpable, touchable in the air nerves in a game like that than there was in the Europa League semi-final. Like the Europa League wow. semi-final, and this is why it's so much more stressful to be a rubbish team than it is to be one of the Super Six who never really actually experience any peril. There's no peril in, oh no, we haven't qualified for the Champions League this year. You don't know pain. You don't know pain, Man United fans and Arsenal fans and Chelsea fans are over the age of... 50 might do, but the unders don't. You know, that's real stress. Potential relegation is real stress. It can be catastrophic to a club to get relegated, especially if your finances are built around being in the Premier League. The drop in money is massive, and you know you're going to not only lose your best players, there's a possibility you might never get to a level where you can compete against the Super Six. You'll never get into Europe. You'll never get into a Europe Europa League semi final, which is just one of the greatest things that's happened to me as a a football fan. So the stress is there. I think you feel more confident when you know you've got quality players and they will turn it around. I've been in this situation as a supporter where I know we had rubbish players and a rubbish manager and we were definitely going to go down looking at you, Uncle Avram Grant, and you kind of feel hopeless but hopeful at the same time. And that's kind of what the atmosphere is like. And there is, when you win it, when you win it, the relief is incredible. When you lose it, the despair is almost uncontrollable and it gets to you for 24, 48 hours. And because I work in this industry, it's hard to walk away from it. If I didn't, I think I wouldn't watch any sport for two or three days. Walk the dog, kiss the kids, make dinner the next night and avoid it because otherwise it can be all encompassing. All right, then, just a quick word on um, 6th, 7th and 8th at the moment. Brighton, Fulham, Brentford, all enjoying, you know, fantastic seasons. I'd all be delighted, all the fans of those teams, that they're sitting up there. I mean, what do we kind of read into that? What do we take into that? Is it just a nice little Christmas card? Oh, look at those teams. Aren't they lovely? They're doing quite well this year. I mean, what? how seriously do we take that? Well, I think we take it seriously in terms of Europa League and Conference League qualification. I think they're going to be in that conversation till the end of the season, and that's a great achievement. And potentially, for I think Fulham, more likely of the trio, to have a nibble at the fourth place Champions League spot as the season goes on. But what you've got here is three teams that have, have shown bravery in big games, taking their chances when they've come, really well-organised defences, uh, compact grounds um, around London, basically, uh, of fans that are pleased to be there and have got behind their team the entire way. And also a physicality about those teams that... They're not here to get brushed past. They're not here to get pushed past. They are here to make things difficult for the opponent. They get in your face. They press high. They're not afraid to do long passes, work the channels, look in behind. And they don't feel they are beaten. They are not afraid to play Liverpool, afraid to play Chelsea, afraid to play Manchester United. Uh, and you add the fact they can all score goals. You know, the clean sheets are one thing. But if you can score goals to boot, if you've got an Alexander Mitrovic, if you've got and Ivan Tony, um, then you could be in serious business in this league. And all three of them have been spectacular. All three of them deserve to be in European football next season. The only issue with that is every time they win, another player from Brighton gets sold to Chelsea or Arsenal. So that's an issue for them.